Hey everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, learningdslrvideo.com. I'm doing another Magic Lantern RAW test. So I'm shooting this in RAW on my 5D Mark III. And what I'm gonna do here is just a little bit of the post-processing. What I'm trying to figure out is contrast because what's really interesting when I was comparing the H.26 version versus the RAW version, which you can click right here and go see on my site if you like. Um, watch the, that comparison. So. What I was noticing when I was bringing it in, there was more contrast in the RAW, which really surprised me, than the H.26 version. In the H.26 version, I was using a neutral picture style with the contrast turned all the way down. So what I wanna try here is try to match the two in post. So let's go try to do that next. All right, since I've only been doing this just a few times, I will claim I am not an expert at workflow with RAW video, at least it, not yet. So. What I'm going to show you is just a, a small portion of my workflow um, so we can work on contrast. So let's go ahead and go to After Effects and I go down to File, Import. And I pick the first one in the DNG after I've already converted it from um, the original file. It comes right off the card. Say Open. And then the first thing you'll notice we got to fix right away is the color balance. For some reason it always comes in at 6200 and 66. I still got to figure out if there's way I can change this in camera. If anybody knows, please let me know. But for me, I know that these type lights I'm at usually around 50 to 50 and about 40, I'd say about 49. <clears throat> and that gives me a nice even balance. And to show you really quick how I got those numbers, I know I said I was going to be about contrast, but what you can do is just take the calibration target, go like this, and then you look at your um, three spikes. So this middle spike, right off the bat, actually I'm going to want to change the exposure. So I'm going to bring that up so it's right about in the middle. Say 18% gray should be right kind of in the middle. And then what you'll notice if I take the if I make it cooler, you'll see that blue spike go to the right. If I make it warmer, the blue spike goes the other way. What I want to do is line those up right in the middle, that middle spike. Um, you can see it's a little bit off in the highs. I don't know why, but the blacks um, are pretty good. So then I usually take the tint and see if I can fine tune it a little bit more. And that's about as good as I can get it. So it's usually around 5300 and a plus 48 for these particular lights that I've got because they have a little bit of a green bias. So wait, basically what I want to do and try to, instead of trying to match it to the uh, compressed version, um, H.264 version, what I'm trying to do here, I'm just going to take all the contrast out of it. Make it more of a log or Canon log, log C or whatever those logs are. Um, make it as flat as I can so I have the most flexibility in post. And it doesn't, when I do that, I don't, you know, I'm shooting this at ISO 200. I'm not seeing too much noise like in the shadow, so I think we're okay. Um, and then in terms of the highlights, I know out this window I could protect just a little bit of them. So I could um, bring this down ever so slightly if I wanted to, maybe about here. And then the shadows, I can bring these up. Now, if I do bring it all the way up, I am starting to no notice some noise. So I don't want to go too far with the shadows. So um, I'm just going to lift them just a little bit. And I'm just kind of looking by eye to see where it starts to get, the image starts breaking apart. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm not going to touch clarity. Uh, I'm not going to touch vibrance or saturation. Um, I have noticed that the RAW has a little bit more saturation than the compressed version. And one of the reasons is because I usually knock the saturation down minus one when I am doing um, regular compressed compressed video. <laughs> so now what I want to do is go to the next one over. I'm not going to play anything with the curves. I'm going to try to do that all in uh, my nonlinear editor when I grade, I guess you could say. Next one off is sharpening. I turn the sharpening all the way down and I'd rather do it um, in the nonlinear editor when I can see stuff because I can't obviously see my face. Um, just I'm looking at digital calibration target. I don't want to sharpen it right now. Um, and then in terms of noise level, since I did bring the shadows um, up a little bit, and I'm introducing a little bit of noise. What I'm going to do is just kind of play with this slider to see if um, I can add a little noise reduction. I'm just going to boost it just a little bit. And then that's pretty much it. I usually don't touch anything else, at least not yet. Um, 
I might later in the future. Because <laughs> uh, again, I haven't done this that much. Then next I take this and I go um, interpret footage. And since I shot everything at 23976, I'll do that. Because if I don't, it's not going to sync up with my audio. Um, and then I take this and I just basically drag it down to a new comp. I think that's what it's called. I'm not an After Effects kind of guy, but I, I know enough to be dangerous. Um, and that's pretty much it. So what I do here is I say file, save, and I'm just going to save the actual file as, um, as you can see I already did this once. I'm going to make this contrast raw 2. And then I'll click save. All right, since that's saved, then I'll go into Premiere Pro. And I'll go on the timeline here. Kind of disregard all this other stuff. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in... <clears throat> the uh, one I just did. So I'll just go, uh, let's see, contrast two, and then I just open it and say comp, I say okay, and then close this, and then put it here, and then all I need, exact, I've already synced it up with the audio here once before, but I'm, I just wanna show you what I'm doing here, is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna drag and hold, takes a second because you know it's a big file and so let's zoom over to where I'm sitting at the chair and you can see I got a very flat look um, yeah let's uh, take this takes it a second once it gets going it works a lot better there I'm taking a drink of water um, all right so what I want to do is compare this is um, shot this on the H.264 version and this is what you'll see at the very end of this video is where I say goodbye um, and then this is the raw right here and you can see I turned the contrast all the way down so it's very uncontrasty so what I'll do is I'm gonna take um, go to my presets here and I take curves and just drop it on here and then I'm just gonna go open up the curves and what I'm gonna basically do here is just um, create an S-curve and then I'm going to get it to match up to where the other one is. And right off the bat I'm just going to do this by eye and find out where I want the shadows. Maybe right, right there. Maybe the highlights with my shirt. I'm kind of looking at that wall behind me. Maybe about right there. That's just a guess. And then I'll compare it to here. And I'm going back and forth. Uh, it looks like I need a little bit more contrast in the shadow, so I'm going to bring this down slightly. Uh, maybe about right there. Doing this all by eye. <laughs> and I'm close. Um, there's a color difference, which I'll fix here in a second. Also, there's another thing wrong. is um, Since this is shot at like 1088, I don't know why they did 1088. All I do is add 1% more on the scaling and that fixes that issue. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring in my other preset that I normally bring in and let's see and what I'm going to do is really quick I kind of know that this one has a little bit more green in it. I'm looking at that back wall. This back wall right here is painted neutral gray and that's why I did it because I I wanted to have something gray in the scene. So I can see just going back before, back and forth between these two that I've got a little bit too much green. So I'm going to take away the green and maybe just about like right here. And now let's take a look. All right, that's a lot better. That's closer. Now I'm maybe a little bit too magenta. Let's bring it back. It's not much, very, very little bit. All right, so now I got the color difference same. Now I'm looking at the contrast between the two. And I'm gonna say they are pretty darn close. So all I did is I just created a little uh, just curve. I guess that you could call that my log curve. <laughs> all right, that's pretty much it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.